My name's Claire and um, I'm currently a junior doctor. I'm working at Monash Medical Centre in Clayton. Uh, I'm third year postgraduate, postgraduate after I finish medicine, and which means I'm still a junior doctor. And um, it basically means you normally work in a team full of senior doctors as well. I grew up in Dandenong, so I attended Dandenong North Primary School and then later um, graduated from Dandenong High School. I studied medicine at Monash University in Clayton. At the moment, I'm due to start nights in two days' time, so it, that job is more different from any of the other jobs you do during the daytime. But like I said, you work in a team, so as a junior doctor, you work in a team with a consultant who's a specialist, a registrar who's a specialist in training, and then often some medical students. It's a really great environment to work in because you're well, quite well supported, and there are many opportunities for both active and passive learning because you get to observe these specialists in training. Mm -hmm. I think what I really enjoy is the fact that there's always something to learn. Medicine is really a career of lifelong learning, and I feel that you can never know it all, and I find it fascinating how there's something always new to be discovered or learnt. Well, my last job that I just finished was the thalassemia job, which most people have never heard of. And in, even in medicine, a lot of people have said, you know, what is thalassemia? What, um, what does it involve? And it was really interesting meeting these patients that previously we'd only heard about in textbooks. And we saw pictures of them in textbooks. And then to actually meet them and sort of learn to treat them, that was really interesting. In a hospital, I think it's a really good environment. So you've got your team that you get quite close to. And then there's also the everyday patient interaction, which always lead, leads it to be quite unpredictable and enjoyable. I think if you're considering a um, profession, uh, sorry, a career in medicine, I think it's definitely a very rewarding career, but at the same time, it can be very challenging and demanding and often requires some lifestyle adjustments. It's not a career that you can go into lightly, so I don't think you can sort of do it if you're not fully um, committed to it. And I think many high school students get their perspectives of medicine from TV shows which glamorise the entire profession or are sometimes pressured into aiming for a career in medicine. Um, I think it, it's something you either like or you don't. And for high school students considering it, I would strongly recommend doing a week of work experience in a hospital or a clinic-based environment. For example, my older brother did one week of work experience in a hospital um, sort of clinic environment and he hated every moment of it and decided he could never go into a career in health. Whereas for me, the um, effect was the complete opposite. I'd have to say um, the patient interaction is definitely one of my favourite aspects of the job. It um, always is quite fun and unpredictable. And over the last few years, I've met many inspirational patients who helped me put my life into perspective. I think just their optimism is really inspirational and I begin to realise that my own frustrations and problems seem so small in comparison. I think that's definitely one of the most rewarding aspects of my job. The best piece of advice I received in high school was, and this sounds really lame, <laughs> was um, to aim for the stars and if you miss, that way you'll land on the moon. What this means is to always try your absolute best because in life, more often than not, we fall a little bit short of our goals. But if you were aiming so high to begin with, you fall in a place that you're still quite happy with. I tutored high school students for almost 10 years and during those years I saw some, pa some students who knew what course they wanted to get into, aimed for that particular enter score, and then, as often happens due to stress or unforeseen circumstances, they fell a, lot, a little bit short of that score and were then, then found themselves in a very unexpected place, had never considered this position and were then forced into rushing into making a decision. Whereas this was in contrast with students who always did their absolute best, were left pleasantly surprised, had a wide variety of um, choices at the end, often got their first preference or at least their second. So I think that's really important. Um, I remember when I did my work experience at the Alfred Hospital and the Baker Heart Research Institute in year 10, and I remember telling them I wanted to do medicine, and one of the doctors, I think, um, said, there's always many paths to, to the one career. So he said, you know, even if you don't get into it from year 12, remember you can do postgraduate medicine or you can, you, you can even start off on a career in science and then, you know, go into research or anything. And I think in VC especially, you're sort of just caged up in this environment where you feel that this is your last year and, you know, you'll never have a chance of, um, at your career again. But that's entirely untrue. I think the most formative years of high, of high school and VC is, um, begins in year 10. So in year 10, you should really make careful choices about your electives and what subjects you're going to go on to do in year 11 and 12. Choosing your subjects to um, impact what career you're going to, it's too late in year 11 and 12. You really need to decide that earlier. Um, this helps you uh, really plan out your study timetable, which is really important because ideally you'd want to start mid-year 11 
to start preparing for year 12 because you got you have to remember that a lot of the unit two subjects are linked with the unit three and four subjects so you can start that entire run up mid-year 11. I think um, what I always told my students when I tutored them was that VCE is just one year where you have to sort of put aside less important things in your life and concentrate on the one goal that you want. You know, what is it that you're aiming for and to go for it fully. I know sometimes you hear or you read about in these advice columns and things, you know, um, have a balanced life, enjoy your sports and things like that. But I actually think that isn't always the best idea. For example, with sports, you might break your arm, which one of my students did a week before his exams, and that just, you know, disturbed the rest of his exams and things like that. From someone like in, in my, from my school, in Dandenong High School, you find you have to work a little bit harder than, or a lot harder than, you know, um, some of the other um, private schools, to be honest, out in, in Victoria. And I think it's important to be aware of this because that way you don't take these falsified ideas from the general VCE lectures and things like that and really just work hard that one year. You find in the end it does pay off. You might come out of the year exhausted, but you're happy with where you are and you'll find that um, the discipline that you acquired in year 12 really helps you get through the rest of your life in general.